I should have told you it was your baby the moment I found out I was pregnant. Do you expect me to argue? You have every right to be angry with Don't me. Don't give me permission to feel, Robin. Help me to try to understand. You wanted this baby more than anything. So why do you hate me so much for making it with you? In my heart, I always... I wanted to have your baby, but you said you didn't want to be a father, so I thought it would be best if you just didn't, you didn't know. You lie to me to protect me. You lied to shut me out. I know that's how it seems, okay? But I realize that you can't... You can't lie about a child for your own convenience, not because you justify to yourself that the father would be better off not knowing or the child would be better off not knowing who the father is. Robin, I didn't want a baby in the abstract when, when your pregnancy was still a hypothetical and you took that as a chance to, to, to never tell me that it was my baby in the first place. Look, I know I made a mess of this. And, and it's so ironic because out of all people, <laughs> I mean, I should know the damage that comes from lying about a child. I had a front row seat when Carly and Jason were lying about Michael. I mean, to go even further back, when my mom lied to my dad about me, and he didn't even know about me for the first six years of my life, my mom was wrong. Carly was wrong. And now, you know, it's, it's, it's my child. It's a baby that's growing inside of me, a baby that you said you didn't want. And so I lied, and I was wrong. And I'm sorry, and I, I, I mean, I'm trying to undo it, but I'm just obviously making a mess of that, too. Okay, okay. Hey, hey, just calm down here. I'm in a little mood swing, I think. <laughs> I think. Just here, sit down for a second. <laughs> when I came to you the night of Georgie's funeral, I just felt hopeless. You know, her death was like confirmation that nothing good ever lasts. And so I needed to be with you. I needed to be with, with you because when we were in love, I remembered what it was like to be happy. And that was when we made our child. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm so grateful to you. Because, you know, whatever happens, the greatest gift that I will ever receive. I'm glad to be the father of your baby. That was my initial thought when I figured it out. That we'll always be connected because you know, we made a child together. And I thought you were just angry with me for not telling you. Are you kidding me? I was furious. I was terrified, I was th thrilled and awed, but I was confused. I still am. <laughs> Don't take this the wrong way, but you sound just like an expectant father. Epiphany. Cubicle two, a victim from the cannery explosion. She has a laceration on her right abdomen and needs stitches. If the victim is Carly, you might want to have another doctor look at her. That's Claudia Zakara. Oh, wonderful. A woman from another mob family. Miss Zakara, I'm Dr. Scorpio. Mm. I understand you were in an explosion tonight. Mm, yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to give you an exam. If you'd like to wait outside. Actually, I want someone to look at my little brother first because he was in the explosion, too. We could have a concussion or something. See that? Okay, uh, talk to the desk nurse. She'll put you on the waiting no, list. No, 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 no. My brother isn't going on some stupid list. Claudia, I'm fine. Just let the doctor do a job and swing up, okay? <laughs> I need to take a look at your wound. Mm. Ow! You're gonna need stitches. We'll get to it. Dr. Scorpio with the patient. I got some test results I want to take a look at. I just got a call that Carly Jax is en route. Paramedics say she was recovered from the water and her vitals are depressed. I need trauma one prep to treat her for hypothermia. I want a team standing by. Uh, Dr. Scorpio's in cubicle two. Uh, simple laceration. It shouldn't take her too long. I will administer a topical anesthetic, give you stitches, and have you admitted overnight for observation. Now, before I begin the procedure, you should know that I'm HIV positive. You have HIV. 
That's right. Okay. But I don't want you touching me. I don't want you treating me. Okay, that is your prerogative, of course, but you should know that statistically speaking, I don't care about statistics. Chance... They should have told me that you were sick before they let Dr. you Scorpio come in here. Scorpio isn't sick. In fact, she takes every precaution to maintain her health. Good. So do I. That's why I don't want her touching me. I'll have the desk nurse find you another doctor. You should take the time to educate yourself. You might sound less like an ignorant bigot. Yeah, would you want her infecting you or somebody you cared about? She would never risk infecting anyone. I know it's because she's carrying my baby. Maybe you need to read a pamphlet. Ugh, warning. It's another mood swing in progress. Is it grounds for malpractice to have a healthy patient's stomach pumped? Tell me you didn't do that. No, but I might. Claudia's still on the eighth floor, and after her stomach being pumped, I'm going to give her a free colonoscopy. You cannot end prejudice by punishing those who are ignorant. No, not everyone, just that intolerant bitch. <laughs> uh, you know, I know that I shouldn't let it get to me. Except for the fact that there is a 2% chance, okay? It's only a 2% chance that I could pass on HIV to my baby. And as much as that scares me, it scares me even more that someday my child could be treated the same way that Claudia treated me tonight. Robin, there's a 98% certainty that our baby won't have HIV. Those are dream numbers. That's, that's better than any surgeon could ever promise. Even me. But if our baby is... If our baby's part of that 2%, <laughs> They're going to have you to teach them how to live with HIV. And when some idiot like Claudia comes around and insults them, they're going to shrug it off because they saw their mom do the same thing. Can I just say you picked a perfect time to be wonderful? you off in front of your building, I won't even walk up to your door. <laughs> you know, I don't know what's more annoying about morning sickness. The false expectation that it can only happen in the morning or that it strikes when you least expect it. Well, I hear it's only the first three months, so hey, you're halfway there. It's easy for you to say. <laughs> Maybe I will take that ride. Okay. Just give me fair warning in case I have to pull over. Baby or no baby, I don't want you puking in the car. Thank <laughs> you. 